Africa is kind of like getting recognized. They see that people actually live a better lifestyle now. I wasn't thinking about Ghana, man. Ghana was like way later on, when number 45. I had the same perception. 45, 50, maybe I'll retire early and come yeah. here. But to come here at 27 when I came here, that was, oh. that was out of the game. Moving to Ghana or Africa from the West, from my point of view, has always been a thing for the old, tired and retired. Apparently not the case nowadays. In this video, a highly driven and inspirational young entrepreneur shares his experience of leaving his high-flying job in corporate America to build a house and businesses in Ghana. I'm sure you find value in this video. Cash is king. If you don't have cash in Ghana, your life is going to be miserable. Yeah. Um, absolutely miserable. My name is Mickey. Keep watching. How are you doing? Doing great, Mickey. How's it going? Thank you very much for doing this for me. Of course. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you too. So, one thing. Were you born in America? No, no, no. I was born here in Ghana. In Ghana, okay. Yeah, yeah, I was born here in Ghana. My father left us when I was about seven and then came for us seven years later. So I left Ghana when I was 14. Oh, 14? Yeah. Oh, okay, so how long were you in America for? I came back to Ghana when I was 27, so 13 years basically. But in between that, I came to Ghana about maybe, maybe four times in total. All right. Okay. Yeah, I think when I was 19, I came back. That was the first time. So five years, I didn't come back to Ghana. Mm. And when I started making money, I came to Ghana for the first time when I was in the Navy. Ah. And that was, I was 19. Okay. And then I think I came back when I was 21. Yeah. And at the age of 21, that's when I was advised to buy land mm. by uh, my father's friend. So, and one thing led to the other, and then, you yeah. know, I, I so know. I hear a lot of people who go to America, you know, who are born in Africa and then they go to America. Right. They say something about um, a lot of Afro-Americans laugh at them from coming to America. Yeah. I don't know, like they say there's a bit of a banter yeah. about yeah. continental. Is, is it something you experience? Yeah, it was. I mean, it's definitely better now, right? Because okay. of social media and afro chella and... Uh, uh, Afro beast now is like Africa is kind of like getting recognized. They see that people actually live a better lifestyle now, so it's a lot better now. And I think I think it's actually cool now to be an African. Mm. But that was not the case when I was okay. like when I first went to America. I mean, definitely not all African American. But if you're in high school, these kids are like they don't know any better. You know, 18 and under, and some people that are old still see Africa. Like if you turn on the news, I don't. Sometimes I understand it. You know, I don't blame them. If you turn on the news. The people that look like you in Africa, where people are saying that's where you guys came from, mm. you know, they have flies on their head, they have these big bellies. Uh, they don't look, it's, it's something that you don't want to associate yourself with, you know what I'm saying? So, though what those people were doing is wrong, I could get where they're coming from if you're young yeah. and you try to feel like you're better, you know, PBD and all that stuff. So when you get there, they laugh at you. They call you Africa, uh, African booty scratcher. They laugh at, they laugh at your accent. Mm. Um, they just think they're better than you, right? Because, you know, America is full of racism and kind of classism, you know, like colorism and all that stuff too. So they want to put themselves all their lives, it's like black Americans or African slavery. They've been, you know, the racism going on. They feel like, oh, we got another race that we feel like we are superior, right? So that's, that's what I got, my own experience. I experienced that, like, I think on two occasions. That's, that's just a feeling that I got, right. yeah. So, um... I, I actually had a taste of it when I was working in Germany okay. and we had like an, an Afro-Caribbean group where we always hung around and I, I told one St. Lucian guy that, oh, do you know you came from Africa and he actually chased me. He wanted like, to he, beat me up, yeah. Really? He wanted to yeah, beat me up. He's like, that's, no, that is like blasphemy. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's really bad. Um, yeah. I remember I have a friend, black American, and um, I told him, you know, we are all Africans, you know, you guys, you know, we all, you guys were, came in as slaves and all that stuff. And he like, nah, man, I'm from Israel. And he was educating me. He said, yeah. the Israel, black, he said, I look nothing like, I look nothing like Africans. Like, I don't have African mm. features. I'm like, bro, you are like my skin complexion. Yeah. As a matter of fact, if I drop you in Ghana, you don't speak English. Yeah. You blend in just like, that's that. serious, yeah. man. <laughs> but I get a good laugh out of yeah. this. I he think, was serious. I think one of your videos, someone was actually, someone commented like that, talking about how, or maybe it was one of my videos. So in Belize, I made a video about the Garifunas, mm -hmm. and they've got a lot. So there's a tribe in Belize. They've got a lot in common 
with like most of the tribes, Ashantis. Even their color, they have a flag. The color is like Ashantis. And I made a, a similarity, and someone just schooled me how nah, we, we are not from Africa. Yeah, and all the, yeah, yeah. I just let it go. So how do you deal with it? Oh, I don't take it serious. I, like, I never really cared. I remember my first time when I was 14. For whatever reason, I've always had like a lot of self-confidence. I don't know where that came from, but I've always been that way. I mean, when I was younger here, even my peers, I was always the leader. I've had this confidence. So if you are white and you are racist against me, which I haven't experienced. As a matter of fact, I've experienced more black people trying to feel like they're better than white people. Being. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but my own personal experience, mm. I haven't really experienced that much of racism among the whites. It's been, you know, my fellow black people who are trying to you know, think they're better than me. And particularly in high school, that's when a lot of these things were happening. It never, it never got to me. I will tell you what happened with the first encounter. It was a guy which I came to find out this guy was actually from Haiti. Later on, way later on, like I mean five years later, he's from Haiti, but he came to the States when he was like three, so he thinks he's black American now, right? And he was asking me when I first got there, I think my second week, strong accent. He was asking me if I play with lions and tigers and all this crap that right. everybody goes through this, right? And I'm like, nah, you know, I was being polite. He, he kept going on and going on. So I'm like, I gotta get this guy back. So I told him that I came on a plane, like I came from Ghana on a plane, bought a plane ticket and I came. And my ancestors sold them out. Yeah. It was sold as a slave and that pissed him off. But I was pissed off. That's it. And yeah. I won the conversation. That's it. So I've always had like, I will take you on. If you want to yeah. take it there, I will take I will take you on. Like, yeah. so I never really care if you white races against me. Like I've met some cool white people and I've met some people that are not directly towards me. But I noticed that the whites that are like better off, well educated, uh, they are not as racist. It's the whites who got nothing going on, That's poor, it. and yeah. all that stuff. That thing, all the guys, they are color. So you a loser. Like it never, this stuff yeah. never get to me. I feel like you a loser. I laugh at it. It no, never got yeah. to me. Like it never took it personal. Yeah. As a matter of fact, so it was I never read, a factor in my life. I read something about about racism. It's like it's first ignorance. If you don't know something, then you are skeptical and you are afraid of it and then you try to avoid it and that's where hate starts from yes. so yeah a lot of people who don't travel people who don't really have a broad spectrum of you know an outlook about life yeah they are the absolutely places. absolutely that's why when we like i said as i got older I, you know i don't know if it's african culture or whatnot you don't i don't hear this stuff mm -hmm. I, I haven't heard that in a long time this were happening in high school. Yeah. And my Navy day is this friend of mine. And it's funny, because now he wants to come and visit Ghana and blah, 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 blah. So it's funny. But mm -hmm. you know, uh, these things happen. It was just ignorance. Like I said, he just doesn't want to associate himself with mm -hmm. a kiss with the flies and all that. And I get it, but mm -hmm. you know. So, yeah, so coming to Ghana, I've, I've followed your journey. And I can see that there's one thing I can vouch about you is you've got resilience. You've Thank got you. a high level of resilience. Is it because of your time in the Navy? My father is tough as a nail. So I grew up hardcore, right? I was never like, uh, you know, babied or anything. Like my mom is very sweet, but we grew up hardcore. My father was like, my father was so strict and he wasn't beating us, but just scolding and, you know, nothing is good enough. Like, you know, you don't get praised. My father would not praise you. My whole life, my father never praised me. I think like two years ago or something like that, that he came out like, like accidentally. He didn't mean to, he was saying mm. that he came out, he would never praise you. So you, you get to a point where nothing faces me, like nothing, mm. nothing. Like, you know, and I, that's, that made me a better trader. Mm. Nothing faces me. I've lost $100,000 a day before. And yeah. I'm still, when I'm saying that I'm making money and if I'm losing money, you can't, I'm detached, yeah. right? And that's, that that is what it takes to mm. take on stuff in Ghana. I think this is the way I grew up. The military was a lot easier compared to the way I grew up. All right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like I, my father was very like militant way. So you know. So I think uh, that's what it takes to make it here. Cause people will try you. Mm. Uh, it's a lot of crap that you have to deal with down here. And I'm detached. I'm I'm emotionally detached from all of it. It's just mm. I just I just deal with facts. And it helps me on YouTube too. You know. You have some comments. I'm detached from all of it. Nothing gets to me. Is this I will address it or I will leave it? But never, you know, nothing mm. gets to me. You know, I have yet to maybe, maybe get to that. But emotionally, I'm emotionally yeah. like I'm rock solid there. So let's get into your time in Navy. 
way. I've worked with Marines before. I'm also in the British forces. Yeah, and just found out. Yeah, I've worked with Marines. Are Marines Navy or Army? Marines are different in the States, so we have like four branches within the, the Army, then the Marines, Navy, and then the, uh, these guys, life, life, National Guards or something like mm -hmm. that, yeah. So the Navy is like, we control the ships, we control the seas. Marines are like both, they usually attach them, that's why you met them. They usually, uh. when we go on deployment, they will bring in Marines, they are trained differently, and they do certain stuff, so they are both on the water, on, on the ground, mm -hmm. right? Navy is strictly on the, on, the, on the water. If you are doing anything on the ground, it's because they're trying to give you a break from the water. And the Marines are basically, they attach them to us and, and want to help them. But they are hardcore. The Marines is hardcore. Uh, in America, uh, we take something known as the ASVAP. It's a test that you take to get in. I'm sure there's a different name yeah. for you. And um, based on the score that you get, the Navy and the Air Force, you got to score a lot higher than what you need for the Marines okay. and the, the Army. All right. Yeah. One thing I realized working with the Marines, and so I've worked with the American forces in Afghanistan, and one thing I realized was I saw a lot of young black officers, young female officers, and it gave me the impression that, well, if I see a Ghanaian officer in the British Army, it's like an endangered species, you know, like it's special. It doesn't happen often. It doesn't happen often. Why? Is it? I don't know. I don't I've know. Been hearing, I've been hearing that, um, you know, kind of like job classification mm. in the UK. I've never been there. I yeah. mean, but I know a lot of friends here that move from the UK. And the way they describe it is like, it's still really primitive where they think if you're black, you're supposed to be in the bathroom cleaning. Yeah. Like the jobs are really like divided. So they put. Does it have something to do with they that? Put, they put a lot of barriers. So, like, I, I wanted to be just a healthcare, um, like mental health nurse okay. at the beginning, but you have to be five years before. Okay. Um, a lot of security stuff, okay. but for some reason, I don't know, the Americans, I saw a lot of, you know, minorities, officers, like yeah. I remember one day there was this 25 year old officer who was in charge of all the flights, all the air, um, mission. Yeah. And this guy actually told me, anytime you want to have a spin, just come and tell me and I'll take you for a spin. And I'm sat there going, that is a lot of power you were for a young black. Yeah, yeah. So is it, do you think they give more opportunities? To no, no, not because of your color. But I would say that in the Navy, one thing that I would tell you is, unless, of course, you run into some chain of command where you happen to have some races chief or whatever, or like, you know, somebody above you, but they can't even keep you down because it's very fair. Uh, you know, if you are smart, you take your test. Um, I mean, I can't say it across board, but it's very fair. America is very yeah, fair. As long as it's you equal can opportunity. pass. Yeah. Uh, equal opportunity, you know, no criminal record, all that stuff that you're supposed to have. If you have it, you pass the test, you qualify. And this person probably joined at the age of 18, right? Uh, you can go you straight as an officer. You do one or two years schooling. Mm. He came out like, you know, 19, 20. And he's been there for seven, eight years. You can have that power. Yeah. So, yeah, you do see... In the Navy, I, you know, like I said, I haven't really experienced a lot of racism um, because I don't know if it's because I was in the Navy. Mm -hmm. I did, though, when I went to uh, corporate America. I, had, I saw that. Um, but, yeah, in the Navy, you know, if somebody is, let's say, homosexual or something, mm -hmm. they don't judge, don't talk about it, whatever, like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So if they find there's code and conduct, and you know, you know that. So uh, the test is, is, is not, it's, it's unbiased. Mm -hmm. You take a test, we take a test to, to pass, and if you took the test and you qualify, you make yeah. it. I don't, think, I don't think in the UK, let me put it out there, I don't think there's racism, but it's just, I don't know. When I saw the Americans, I thought they give more opportunity. Like, I saw a lot of Ghanaian chiefs and captains and the responsibility they have. I'm like, wow. Okay, corporate America. So you, had, you had a good job, really good job. It yeah. sounds from the sound of it. Yeah, yeah. When well, did the idea to come to Ghana came in? The thing is, because you know, I was in the military for four years, so from 18 to 22, military, right? And then I thought I hated it. My first two, three months, I hated it. Because I mean, I joined the military to get away from my dad and start my life on my own. 
and I just hated it because where I ended up at, you cannot, you cannot jump on a train because I, I grew up in New York. I didn't know how to drive. And in Virginia, that's where I was stationed at in the beginning. You can't get around. And I was stuck on a ship in the shipyards is where they fix the ships. Okay. Where there's a lot of restrictions with regards to using your phone. Everything was just bad. And I'm like, I regretted it. Like, why did I sign up, right? Um. I cried the first day. I'm like, this sucks. Like, I made a huge mistake. But as time went on, I met a Ghanaian, like you said, a Ghanaian uh, officer, um, you know, and, you know, because he's, he's a Ghanaian. One thing I would tell you is if you meet a Ghanaian, I'm a Ghanaian, in any country, mm -hmm. take you out like a family. And he helped me get a place off the ship right away. Usually you gotta serve your time, but kind of helped me expedite the process. So uh, after that, I met a, you know, this friend who was a white dude. Uh, you know, he showed me how to drive and stuff like he taught me how to drive. He was a very nice guy. He would take me to work every morning because we live on the same base. So I started being able to, you know, be mobilized and stuff like that. And I was killing the game. I was killing the game uh, as far as like work ethic and how they treated me. They liked me. So I started to like it. And it was before, you know, my wife and I got together. You know, my wife and I were friends. But, you know, I was a single guy loving it. Was like, I'm doing 20 years, because in the mm. military, you do 20 years, you can retire, right? Doesn't matter what. So 18 to 38, got my retirement package, and I'm good to go. That was the plan. Mm -hmm. But then, I think year 2.5, my wife and I got together year two, and then things changed. I didn't get out because of her, but I just started to see things differently. I started not to like it. It's, it's always happens. Yeah, I started not to like it as much, because she was in New York. I think she could have moved when she graduated from college because, you know, we were really young. My wife is three years younger than me. I feel I got out at, like, 22. She was 19 when I got out, right? You're not going to you're not gonna move. You know what I'm saying? So mm. I left and I went to New York. Um, and then I went to school for accounting because, you know, the military, they'll pay for your school in America. And then they pay you on top of it. So I was making no taxes. I don't know about UK. I don't know the benefits there. But they don't mm. tax the money they give to you. Mm. They call it BH. Yeah. Uh, basic allowance for housing. Okay. And basically, they, they, they think that as a student, you will need some sort of money that you'll be able to pay your rent and eat and go to school comfortably. And the money could have done that, you know, without taxes. You know, somebody has to be making about 60K a year to be receiving the money that I was receiving while I was in school. Um, per a person who's paying taxes. So it was a great deal. And I knew of this before I joined, actually. I wasn't just getting out because of my father. I knew about that. And Americans student loans, I was always like financially savvy in a way. Like I knew how interest rates and all that stuff, it didn't make sense to me. So the military just made sense to me. I get a break from my dad. When I come back, I'll be more older to start, you know, from 22, four years, 26, I'm still young. Mm. No student loans, I'm getting paid while I'm in school. I mean, you can't, I'm getting so paid while I'm in the military. I'm getting paid while I'm in the military. Yeah. You get paid while in the military. You make decent amount of money. And I started, you know, you start low with the base pay yeah. and then it goes up. I was making good money when I was getting out. As much money as somebody with a college degree mm. by year three. So I wasn't messing out on anything, right? And if I would have stayed in for 20 years, I would have made way more money as time went on, right? But I got out and I went to school. They paid for everything. I loved it. While I was in the school, also through the Military Connect, I was working in the school accounting uh, department. Mm. Like on my break, it's not full time. Like on my break, I go there, I do my homework. I do a few work for the boss, and I was there. I did that for I think two years. My last two years, I did my masters too in accounting at the same school. Um, but then my account when I was doing my masters, I interned for KPMG, and that's like the biggest four accounting mm, firms. I've heard about um, they, they they are all over KPMG US. Uh, I interned with them for two two months and two weeks. But while this all of this was happening, while I was going to school, I was working out in a gym where I met this guy. Uh, you know, he was asking me a few questions, you know, how do you how do, you do that? And later on, I came to find out this guy's actually from a very wealthy family, okay. and we became good friends. After we became good friends, I found out that this guy's from a really wealthy family. And when we talk, he was always talking down on corporate America. I had this dream, like, I'm going to graduate with 4.0 GPA, which I did, uh, and then, you know, go and work for the biggest four accounting firms, and you've made it, like, the what your parents want, right? Like the African dream. And that's mm. what I wanted. But anytime we talk, he would like talk some sense into my head, right? Like, 
kind of talk down on corporate environment. Like, yeah. oh, they're full of crap. They suck the blood out of you. How don't you look? He made me feel, he made me feel like I'm too smart to do that. Let's put mm. it that way. Over time, I would say I was brainwashed, but over time, I came to feel like, man, I'm too smart to do this. I could do it on my own. Okay. But I was, he would say stuff like, man, you could, you know, he would read stuff on Africa. He would read stuff on Africa, Ethiopia, like Ghana, the development. This was like way back, like about eight years ago. Mm. You know, that's when all this airport and stuff like, you know, Ghana wasn't always Ghana, right? Yeah. So it was like on the rise before yeah. Africa, I think two years before Africa came in or a year before Africa okay. came in. That's when he started, because he reads a lot. And he would like tell me about, oh, you know, Ghana is like this and that. What are, what are your plans? And I, he, I started thinking about not corporate America. What do I want to do? And I'm like, it would be nice to set up a gym here, but I need money, right? And then he would say something like, ah, you don't need money. You could raise money if you have the idea, blah, blah, blah. He just, he just switched my mindset from the way I used to think as like somebody who grew up in like a middle class family or poor family. He had a whole different idea, like a whole different world of yeah. way of looking at things. And he brought me into that world by just, you know, conversations and all that mm -hmm. stuff. So I'm like, I tried. He helped me, though he was talking a lot of crap about it. He helped me try to get, a, try to get this internship with BYD. It's like the seventh biggest accounting firm. And the lady that interviewed me didn't like the way I was because I was actually questioning her, right? Okay. If she likes a job and stuff mm. like that. So <laughs> that went south. And then I'm like, I never heard back from them for like a week. And I'm like, because the way the, the, the lady was interviewing me, but I felt like she got nervous. Okay. Like, she got nervous because... Is it because of it, like, your character? Yeah, and, I think she got nervous and she felt uncomfortable. Okay. And I knew I wasn't, I wasn't getting it. I didn't mm. do anything wrong, but I was like, she was like, oh, so I'm like, oh, how do you like it? I mean, if I'm coming to work here, you know, and you interview me... So you using and I think her I, as a little more exactly, test. Exactly, yeah. I think she got pissed off for that. And from the look of things, I think she hated a job, because if you liked it, you would have told me, oh, it's great. Straight away, you wouldn't yeah, take yeah. it personal, but, like, the energy was off, you know, you can mm. feel it. And I definitely did not get that internship, though we had an inside is that, person. Is that in America? That's in America. Oh, okay. That's in America. So, though I had an inside person, um, this friend of mine, his cousin was there. He was like almost close to partner level. He was there for a while and he quit, went to start this real estate company. So he made a phone call for me. So it was easy, but I pissed that lady off. Mm -hmm. So I didn't get it. And, uh, and I called a friend of mine and I got an internship at the biggest four accounting firm, KPMD, which was even better. And then I went there and I got to see myself. Like, I do not want to do this. Uh, it was terrible. Crazy hours, 100 hours a week, 90 hours a week. Uh, you know, they were paying me overtime, which was great. But I noticed that people were like, and I asked a lot of questions. Like, my seniors, most people are coming from college. They haven't seen life. I have. So I'm very comfortable with asking questions. And they don't like it. Mm. I'm very comfortable asking questions, getting their life. Like, but some people answer, right? And I came to realize they don't pay them overtime. Uh, I was making more money than they were. Okay. But they try to get you hooked. It's only two months. Mm. You get hooked to come in and you, they set you base and you're working mm. on these crazy hours sometimes and you're making like literally minimum wage when you do the math. Yeah. Right. So I'm like, ah, I don't enjoy this. A lot of corporate politics, stupid meetings. And after hanging out with this guy, mm. I just started to see through a lot of crap and I'm like, this is not for me, right? So mm. yeah, I'm not going to take this path. But what are we going to do? I don't mind suffering. I told you like, yeah. I could suck that something up. I could know that this is not for me. I advise a lot of people, suck it up, save some money, whatever you want to do. Don't just quit. It's not easy mm. to put yourself in a position where you're tired because finances could be really stressful. Yeah. So I was going to go through with it for 10 years. I gave myself 10 years, did a whole bunch of calculations. And then later on, I brought it back to five with a building of a house in Ghana, blah, blah, blah. But COVID came and then, you know, I have been reading a lot of books all this while. I've been studying Warren Buffett for a long time, but I was he he heavily invested in Ghana, so I wasn't really, investing takes a long time. It's slow, you gotta get rich slow. Nobody wants to get rich slow, but it's easy to get rich slowly. Mm. Um, so I was gonna do something like that when I'm done with the house. So I switched from that to trading, where you can make the money fast. And I was schooling from the house because of COVID. Mm. And we were supposed to start, I was interning, from March 2020 to April, no, from January 2020 to March, and then that's when it shot everything. I think like my last two days, it, then everything just went down, mm. so it was perfect. 
And then we came home. I was supposed to start full time in July. They moved it to August and October, right? Because of the companies were struggling, they were laying a lot of people off. They just moved our start date forward to October. So between March to October, I was trading heavily. In schooling, trading heavily, making money, and my perception just got screwed up. Because sometimes it was a day where I made more money than I was going to make in a year, in one day. And I didn't break a sweat. I didn't have to take the train. And I'm like, yeah, this, this is not going to work. Like, this, this corporate is not going to work for sure. All this while I'm planning to come to Ghana. I was going to come to Ghana regardless. Because, yeah. you know, luckily, you know, you're of the military house. I'm stuff set up for myself. So residual income coming in to eat. As long as the house was done, I was good. Mm. So my focus was to finish the house, come in here, and then just try to figure it out. Right, I'm not mm. going to struggle. So that's really important. I don't know how people do it with two thousand yeah. dollars, no residual income coming here. I don't know how to. Mm. Hey, my hats off to you guys. Is that like but people living abroad with two thousand no, or here? People come to Ghana with two thousand dollars, four thousand yeah. dollars, with no house. Yeah. And some people make it, but I'm too much of a planner yeah. to put myself through that. So my hats off to those guys. I, I don't have those balls. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to plan well. So this friend that I know said I could set up a gym in Ghana. You know, he can help me raise money and all that stuff. And me being a person, I am. I mean, we're all human beings, right? He's a cool guy and all that. He could change his mind the next day, and I screw up my life. So I'm like, I'm going to do this my way, right? Which is... But he brought my mind back to Ghana. Let's put it that mm. way. I wasn't thinking about Ghana, man. Ghana was like way later on, when number 45. I had the same perception. 45, 50, maybe I'll retire early and come yeah. here. But to come here at 27 when I came here, that was, oh. that was out of the game. That was... He brought my attention to this. And then I started seeing a lot of videos of Venice County, all these YouTubers, all these young people coming. It came to my awareness. It was always there, but it wasn't mm. part of I wasn't looking at it. I, was, I didn't care about it. But once I started thinking about it, I started seeing all these people, mm. uh, young people here, yeah. um, trying to make a living. And then I keep seeing these videos and I keep getting motivated, mm -hmm. right? And uh, so, yeah, I was able to build a house thanks to trading. I had a, yeah. a four-year plan to do with my wife, but because of trading, I was making so much money that I was like, you know, I would do the whole thing yeah. for us. Yeah, you just enjoy it. And, um, yeah, things went well, made, made, made a lot of money. And yeah. then, uh, you it know. It made it like, okay, if I've, I have this amount of money, then I can. Easily, yeah, easily. Easy. So I was going to come here, raise money. I was coming here, house done, of course, not poor, but, you know, some $10,000 in my pocket. You can't build a gym. You can't do the stuff I want to do. I dream big. You can do it slowly, but I, was, I, was, I had people be, you know, backing me to do this stuff. Mm. But now I was coming back to Ghana with a lot of money, right? Mm. I was coming to Ghana with a lot of money of my own, right? But I didn't have like a concrete plan as far as like what I'm going to do with the money. Yeah. Do I knew I wanted to open a gym. We've looked at a few stuff over the years with my friend. Crazy prices in Osu. I actually went to a crowd mall to ask them for, you know, a space. The prices were crazy. We did the math, didn't make sense. Went to Palace Mall way before they opened this gym. I was ahead of the game. I was ahead of the game, like mm. 2018. They told me they were going to open their own gym, and they did. Uh, so when I came, I really didn't have, and I had this, I believe in, in like, uh, you know, speaking things into existence and thinking about it often. So yeah, I came, I came in with my own money, and now I didn't need to raise money mm. to do what I wanted to do. And it was more visible than ever before. My wife was surprisingly, not surprising, she always believed in me, but she was coming here. I didn't have a concrete plan. I was depending on the people's money to do it. But she believed to come with me. She always agreed to come with me way before the money came. So now that I came with money, I mean, we had no worries. I was smoking mm. cigars. I was living the life, mm. right? But then everything came crashing down during Russia, Ukraine yeah. war. And that's around that time when I was in the process of purchasing this car wash, mm. you know. Yeah. Let's go into the building process. So you are abroad and you're building in Ghana. How easy, how difficult was it? Okay, I will start off with the land. Because I got attacked. I made a whole vi I made a video not long ago about encouraging people to buy a plot of land. For it will cost you less than five thousand dollars if you know if you are being modest with your mm. location, right? And I got attacked for it. But a lot of people take it as a great advice. The reason I'm saying that is because I came to Ghana. I told you um, I didn't hate Ghana. I loved Ghana when I left. I said, matter of fact, I hated America when I first went there. But now I got used to it. Yeah. You get used to your environment. I adapted, and I didn't hate Ghana by any means. But coming to live here. We just don't talk, talk about it, you don't think about it. You get yeah. old, you come here, you do a few stuff, you die. That was the idea, just like everybody else. Now, 
I came to visit. My father's friend, his name was Mr. Kweku. He would take us to the embassy when we were doing our paperwork to go to the States. Whenever I come, I don't forget people that were good to me. I'll go see him, you know, some little traditional stuff. Mm. Uh, he advised me to buy land. I'm like, I'm like, for whatever reason, I listen. I'm very stubborn. I question everything. I don't take what people say. Mm. But that one, I just, it just went in like, okay. I just, I just, it went in. I went there within two months. I spoke to my older brother about land. He told me his friend just bought his land. And that was my first land, no problem. The land was secure, built a wall around it. Somebody was farming on a cassava farm. So I had the land, mm. no plans for it. Uh, I was like, you know, this is before the idea of coming to Ghana. You know, I bought the land in 2016. The idea of coming to Ghana started to come in my life around 2018. That's when, you know, this guy that I was working out with, that's when the idea of a gym and all that. Mm. Stuff. So it was two years before, but everything happens for a reason. God always knows what he's doing. He will push people in your life to send you messages or, you know, the, the way it all comes together. And as I connect the dots, looking backwards, I do know everything was was laid out for me because it just is it's, it's mind boggling, right? So and it makes it easy for you to stick it out. Of course, of course. Yeah, I think, yeah. as a matter, even right now, I would tell you, like this court situation I'm going through, God had a plan for me, right? And I see now in the beginning, I'm like, no way, because I've always believed that everything happens for a reason. But I'm like, this one, this one, dear God, <laughs> this one is not happening yeah. for a reason. This is too much of crap. Um, so when I was talking to my friend, I decided to come. I'm like, the only way I'm going to feel comfortable, because like I told you, I have this. Nice residual income coming in the States. Not enough to live on. From stocks or? From the Navy, from the Navy and oh, the Oh, so you still get stuff yeah, yeah, from yeah, the Navy? Yeah, from the Navy. Right. How uh, long did you say? Four years, but we'll That's get into it. that. Oh, okay. Not everybody who said four years get that, but we'll get into uh, that. That's, uh, uh, you know, some medical stuff. And oh, okay. With my background, okay. you know, right. so I was able to get retirement. I see if I did 20 years. I got to mm. see if I did 20 years in the Navy, though I did four yeah, years. I think I understand it. Uh, yeah. yeah, so... Uh, so that one is not enough to live in the state, but it's more than enough to live there. So I have no problems at all. As long as my house is done, mm. I have nothing to worry about for the rest of my life. Really. Yeah. This money goes up with inflation. Mm. It gets adjusted every year. So I'm good, right? But I don't like mediocrity. So I knew I was going to do something, but your peace of mind, anxiety that comes with not having money, mm. that, that was gone. But if I'm renting, mm. that's not the case. No. The money is not enough. So it became absolutely imperative for me to build this house before we come. Mm. For the sake of my wife not struggling, for the sake of me sticking it out, because I'm stubborn, man. When I'm at it, I ain't living. Mm. If I'm living, it's, because, it's not because I just gave up. Yeah. It's, gonna take, it's gonna take a lot for that to happen, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna make it as hard as possible for me to leave, mm. you know? So uh, that's when I started this house. Uh, when I started the house, I had about I had just bought some car for, and I'm very giving as well, right? So a guy who used to help me out, he wanted, a, he wanted to upgrade his life. And uh, he had an idea of buying him like a private car he would use for a hotel service. Like he would go to the hotel and pick people up, put his numbers, like I'm like, this is not gonna work. He wanna do Uber. He's educated, but not as educated. He doesn't really believe, he didn't believe himself that he could use the app. But like I said, that's my background. I could make people believe that you could do everything. Yeah. Like my wife is on YouTube right now. I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm, I'm the fuck behind it. Yes. <laughs> so I'll, believe, I'll make you believe in yeah, yourself, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, so I'm like, you can do it. He, he did it. Within a week, he was killing the game. Such a great guy. He was paying back the money, but I told him to just forget it. When I was making money in the market, I'm like, I don't need this money. Mm -hmm. Forget it. Just take the car, right? Because I, I love doing stuff like that. Um, but that's before I started making money. I gave this money to this guy. And then I went back. I also bought some car for my, my older brother to use it for, um, my father has a pure water company so to help mm. with distribution. So I had just spent about $13,000 on my savings in Ghana, right, before I left. Mm. Then when I left, the idea of me moving here, my friend was saying, raising money, nobody's going to give me money in the States to open a gym and I'm in the States chilling. Mm. Like nobody's going to do that. So I have to be on the ground. And I'm like, all right, cool. So I'm going to have to build a house. I call my friend who's my business partner now. I grew up with him in New York. Then he moved back here. He went to school here and all that stuff. I know this he's an architect now. So um, before that, he was even helping me find a place for the gym and all that stuff. So, you know, we were, we were communicating. I'm like, you're an architect, right? So then we got into it. I sent him the money. He started with a design. Mm -hmm. The design, a house like mine, cost about, I think, $2,000 and some change for design. Mm -hmm. For everything. Detail design, video, all that stuff. 
So we got to the design phase, we finished. It was time for the permit. And I came to Ghana in 2019 with my friend, this guy that I was working out with. And I went to, I remember I went to take the physical copies of this. He broke down how I could get this house done. And that's what we do now. Because I work with him now. I noticed that there's a huge market. Yeah. And I sold this to him before we even built a house. And my house was basically going to be a prototype for yeah. people to know like, whatever I'm preaching, I'm living in it. Yeah. Like it's, I could build, I could go and show you something. Whatever mm. I'm talking about here, I'm living it. You're going to see me recording videos. Mm. You're going to see me for years to come. I can't fake this. Yeah. Right? So that's as good as it gets. Mm. So that's why we doc documented everything. So, so he, did, he did all the project management? No, he the... was the architect, was the con contractor. He did everything. And the process of everything was insured. Mm. Right? There's an insurance company that insures your building in case anything goes wrong, in case the person runs away with your money. The process is like how people are used to in the States. Mm. It could be done here. Yeah. So I'm like, this is amazing. I know a lot of people who want to build houses, but... You don't trust somebody to do a good job here or they will mm. milk them here. Everything is documented. You get a progress report. Everything, like, by the book. Yes, you're going to pay nice professional fees. As is you, that, is as, that the service you're giving now? Yes, yeah. yes. As you should. Uh, but you, you don't ever have to worry about somebody not doing the job and taking your money. That mm. one is solved, right? So I'm like, this is amazing. Mm. This is what we're going to do. Let's build this house. And when it's finished, we created a company while I was in the States. And we were doing a few jobs before, you know, I came, I came to Ghana by just my father, you know, my father helped me out with his friends that want to mm. do stuff. And that's, that was it. We send the money. You can send money to a dollar account here, yeah. straight 20% fee from my bank. Yeah. I could send as much as $80,000 in one, one, one go. Doing this process, I found out how to move money internationally. I didn't know that. I knew Western Union, small amounts yeah. and cap and all that stuff. So I learned a lot doing the mm. process. When I started, I told him to give me, I think, the design was done, July was here, July 2019. I told him to give me three months, I would start a project, and I didn't have the money, but I found a way to do it. I had like $10,000 and I needed 25 to start. You got something known as mobilization payment. That's the money that we will use to start, to mobilize, to start, and then as we go. So for example, when we take $25,000 mobilization payment, and to make the numbers simple, let's say the building is ten thousand. I mean, hundred thousand dollars. That's not my house. Mm. Hypothetically speaking, you give twenty five thousand out, so you essentially pay twenty five percent of it out. Mm. We do foundation. Let's say foundation is ten thousand dollars. I'm just trying to make these numbers very simple. We're gonna agree that per each stage, we're gonna give you back five thousand dollars of your money. Okay. So if the foundation is ten thousand, you only have to pay five thousand. Okay. Now you have twenty thousand with us. Yeah. You get it. 25, you take the five out. Yeah. And that's how it goes into the project slowly. Okay. You get it. So you end up paying your money back. We end up paying your money back. By the time it gets to a point where you send the money in, because all this why they do the work before you pay them. Because we took the mobilization payment, which is insured. We mm. give you a bond that you can call the bank and see if this person take my money, am I going to get my money back? You could do that. You will get your money. You have nothing to lose. So we do the work first before we bail you, and then we take it out. You get okay. it. So you give us a loan, which is insured, mm. basically. So I, so let's say you're building my house. I give you the loan. The so I give you the payment. Exactly. And then you put it in a bank. Do you use that money? That's what we use for the project. So you use for the project. Why yes. do you give it back to me? You, you because it goes in a project. We don't give it back to you. Ah, okay. So you give me 25000 Because, yeah. I mean, we're not going to use our own money to build a house for you and not paying no. us. It doesn't yeah. work that way. So that's why it's structured. I think it's like this everywhere, actually. Mm. You give a mobilization payment, and it's supposed to be insured. Ghana... Most people operate by trust me, mm -hmm. and that shouldn't be the case. No. We insure that money. We insure the project mm -hmm. in case anything goes wrong, earthquake, people stealing, all that stuff is too much yeah. for us. It's going to be covered. So we insure the, we insure the, the project, and we insure yeah. that mobilization payment, which is this $25,000 that yeah. we just made up. Yeah. You give us the money. Mm -hmm. Now we are starting. You're not taking money from you to go do foundation. That's it. You take we are starting from, from your money. Yeah. Foundation was supposed to cost... $10,000 because we give you something known as BOQ, Bill of Quantities. Mm. That lists everything. So you are aware of how much the project is supposed to cost you. When we did the foundation, it was $10,000. Now, per our agreement, we said per each stage, we're going to deduct $5,000 from the money you give us. So foundation was $10,000. You only have to give us $5,000. Mm. Now you have $20,000 with us. Mm. We take five from you, five from the money you give us. Now you're, you've paid for the, for the foundation. Mm -hmm. You have 20 with us. We move on. The next one is like 7,000. You only pay 2,000. Now we owe you 15. 
So it goes in a project. When we are done, you have spent your, you have spent your hundred thousand dollars in. Mm. You just paid twenty five in advance. Okay. To get your bond. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, is that the same process you use? That's the process yours. I use, and that is what you are basing on to do Acadian. Yes, I'm that, actually working with a guy. Working with it. So yeah. So we we merged with the idea that man. There's a huge market for this. Only if people know about this. Mm. People still don't believe this stuff. Yeah. If only people know about this. The development, a lot of people don't trust anybody. Rightfully so. I mean, there's a lot of stories. Mm. There is no trust situation here. It's give me the money. Your money is insured. Yeah. Right. Professional where everything is documented. Yeah. And we do the work for you. You get progress report, everything. Yeah. So we are working with people that has never stepped a foot in Ghana before. Yeah. What's the company's name? Acadian Limited. Acadian. Link will be in the description. So yeah. uh, that was the process I used. The only thing was finances. I had nothing to worry about. Everything was mm. taken care of. I would choose the tiles and all that stuff. Um, but everything was taken care of. I just sent the money in, which was not easy in the beginning. But like I said, COVID happened. Mm. I had three years uh, plan with him. Mm. Pay me saving, my wife helping me out. That's how we were going to do it. Mm. Then COVID happened. And then I was trading, and I was able to do it in a year and a half because I didn't plan for any of this. Mm. Uh, COVID, COVID happened, and I was making a lot of money then. I actually took a break to use the money to go trade. Uh -huh. So I remember I took a break in 2019. We started in November. 2020, around July, I took a break. Mm -hmm. Or around, I think, October, I took a break. For like three months, I didn't touch the project. Every month that was coming in, I was going in the stock market mm -hmm. and compound, and it was the greatest idea ever. And I'm a risk taker, right? I also so I sold my car because I knew I was about to go work in a corporate environment in October, mm. like I told you. So we take the train to go. It's a bit of a hassle. I sold my car for twelve thousand dollars. I put all of it in the market. Mm. Then I don't have any car loan. I don't have any loans. I took a personal loan. The interest rate was low, seven percent. I took a thirty thousand dollars loan. I added it to my money. So I was like liquid, like sixty k. And I went in the market, wow. and I turned into millions, right? Wow. So. I knew, I did the calculations, right? Mm. I'm like, worst case scenario, the car is mine, I lost it, I'm working. Mm. I'll lose 30K. People finance their cars for 30K all the time. Yeah. How many people have their cars financed? It's the norm. Yeah. I don't have any car loans. Mm. I'm just gonna pay, I think I have to pay like $600 a month mm. for three years. Yeah. Something along that line, and I'm done. Mm. So I did the math and I have nothing to lose. Worst case yeah. scenario, I, I always, as an investor, you have to look at the worst case scenario, bear in the face and be mm -hmm. comfortable with the risk that you're taking. Mm -hmm. I was well aware of it. That I can easily lose all this money. It's going to send me back maybe two years in this project yeah. because now I have to pay this and I have to go through the ground again and do what mm -hmm. I hate, whatever, to get, but no problem. Go big or go home. Mm -hmm. And I went all in and it paid off big time. I was right. My intuition was right. Yeah. And uh, God is amazing. And yeah. I came back and just sent him the money, like finish it. As a matter of fact, I had the money in the project was delaying. So I came to stay in this particular hotel, you know. I'm family, when I came in mm. here, the music was loud, I'm like, turn it down. I was here for five months. Oh, was it? Oh, okay. Yeah, I was here for five months. All right, so it's like family. Family here, I mean, yeah. everybody knows my name here, owner to everybody, yeah. to the chef, all that. So everything worked out well, and I yeah. think God was really guiding me. Mm. You cannot see the steps. So this is my advice to everybody yeah. out there. If you have that strong voice, whatever it is, Whatever, whatever is guiding you when you are scared, just take the first step, man. That's, mm. that's what I did. Like, I did, had no idea how it was gonna be. Mm. My mother was actually scared for me. Why are you rushing to build this house? How are you gonna get the money from? To this, take your time. We all take our time, 10 yeah. years to build. Why do you wanna do this? Like, man, what's the worst that's gonna happen, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. If I don't finish, I still the time. Mm. And I, you know, I read all these personal development books. Yeah. And I know that, just believe and speed up the process. Mm. Like just, just, just speed it up and see what's gonna happen. And people could say the law of attraction, whatever, but I've seen so much believe that that, mm. that thing actually works. Cause it, works, it did yeah. for me. And uh, it did for me as well. Yeah, yeah, it works. To me, it works. Whatever you hold in your mind. I think the problem yeah. that we have here, right, in Ghana, we don't use our mind for good. And I don't blame them, cause life could be tough. Yeah. People are constantly complaining. They are not using their brain. Mm. Um, to plan and think about what they want. It's rather what they don't want, what somebody's doing against. Most people are using their brains for the negative, mm. right? The moment, and I realized too, like, you know, I got into meditation also, kind of observing my thoughts and stuff like that. I realized for 18 years of my life, I have really not 
even, I think I woke up at 20. I would say I woke up, but I didn't even know what I was thinking. Mm. I was just going through life. You know, I was a great student in school and all that stuff. Yeah. I was doing what I'm supposed to do, but I wasn't planning, like mm. really planning. Not like, oh, one day I want to be like, people are wishing. I'm talking about planning. Yeah. As if it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And that's when everything changed for me. That's it, yeah. Um, you've made some statements. I want you to elaborate. Someone living in an uncompleted house in Ghana is better off than someone living in a mortgage abroad in the West. What did you mean by that? Oh, yes. So, I mean, as we all aware, we take on a 30-year mortgage. A lot of these people already have student loans. Mm -hmm. You know, they got a mortgage payment they got to go going on. They got a car lo loan. And all the loans that they have, credit card, all that stuff, these people are buried in debt. Uh, I mean, the stats are online, you could find it out. Less than 10% of the American population have $10,000 to their name. Yeah. Net worth, not cash, um, which means how much they, they, they have. And if you subtract their liabilities from it, they are worth less than $10,000. Um, 78% of Americans cannot give you $400 emergency fund if you ask them for it. That's yeah. roughly about 4,400 Ghana cities. They don't have it. And that was, yeah. they, don't, they don't have it. Uh, this, these are real facts, not produced by me. It's on Google. You could Google it. Mm. So if a person is living in an uncompleted building, that person has no debt in Ghana. That's you're it, not yeah. going to get it even if you wanted to. You're not going to get that debt. They're living in a house that's worth, for, I'll use my neighbor as an example, came from nothing, got a great job at a harbor. He came into his house, uncompleted. He did his talent, he did the inside, the outside was uncompleted. Their floor, he brought his wife in. Great wife. Wife told him, instead of us renting, I know it's not done, but let's start here. Mm. He came in. You know, slowly, when I've, even, when, even when I moved in, his compound was still dirt. Now he's got graffiato in his wall. I don't have graffiato, it's more expensive. He's got graffiato in his wall. Slowly, instead of paying the rent, paying crazy interest on his mortgage, mortgage is good, it can alleviate all the stress of mm. trying to find money to do it is great. I don't look down on it. But I will actually give you an example mm. here. When I was building my house, so I'm very resourceful, right? I was thinking about going for the mortgage. Yeah. So if you're in the Navy, you get, using America, if you're buying a house, you need 20% down. Mm. If not, you get penalized for it. You can put 3.5% down mm. for your first house, and then you pay for an insurance on that 20%, because the market can go down. The bank doesn't want to lose. That's why they make you put that 20% down. The market go down, they take it from you, they will still make their money. That's the reason behind the 20%. Now, the Navy, the, the military, all branches, guarantees that 20%. So I don't have to put a dime down. I just have to pay for the lawyer and all that stuff. Yeah. I don't get penalized for it. But the Navy is saying, hey, I'll give you the 20%. Mm. This guy is good. So when I was coming to Ghana, I'm like, huh, can I take this money and use it for Ghana? Mm. So I tried that. And they told me, no way. They don't no. give that money out for overseas. Now that I have no option, I have to build out of my pocket. Mm -hmm. And I'm so happy I did it. Because imagine if I had the money, I would have been comfortable. That's a, yeah. And that's the situation yeah. with most people in the West. In they the are West. comfortable. And why would you put yourself through all the unnecessary risk if you can get it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, I don't blame two different systems, but the people here, if you're looking at net worth, a lot of people are more wealthier in yeah. Africa. Yeah, because they own it outright. Outright, yeah. right? If you evaluate it, my neighbor right now did his stuff. That house is worth at least 70K. He's got an apartment that he's building uncompleted. Worth mm. at least 70K, 140, mm. right? He's got two cars, all paid off. And he's got land and all that stuff. This guy's worth like 200K. He's working in Ghana. Yeah. Doesn't have a business. But he was building so in his compound. The prices yeah. of the land is going up. Price of iron rods is going up. Prices of cement is going up. Yeah. How many people? I'm telling you. I mean, you could go on Google and say how many people in America it's worth more than 200K. No. The number is slim, my friend. No. Single digits. I remember one of my boss asked me, so it took me nine years to build my first two set of apartment. And then he asked me, how long did it take you to build this house? I said, nine years. He was laughing at me. And I said, you live in a house, right? I said, yeah. Oh, I Years ago. So you've still got. 22 years mortgage, yeah. lose your job right now and to see, see if what it's happened. for you. They'll come and take so, yeah, it. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, another one, cash is king in Ghana. Cash is king because, yeah. I mean, in the States, right, we can use our credit card to do a lot of stuff, a lot of businesses. Credit card could be the savior and the demon, right? If used wrong, it can, really, it can really mess you up big time. If used right, a lot of companies start off credit card. The beautiful thing is that's where you live. But the credit card is, it's unsecured loan. So you can master your credit card. And if 
all things come to crumble, you file for bankruptcy. America gave you this option. You file for bankruptcy, I'm not saying you should go do this. That means you can do this if you're broke. You own nothing, this crap, forget everything, start from scratch like a baby. You have seven years, it's gonna stay on your record that this guy filed for, filed for bankruptcy. You start from scratch, you have nothing to lose. A lot of people use credit cards, they take like five credit cards, like 20K, and then they start businesses with it. People do this. Mm -hmm. A lot of these big companies started, if you read their stories, that's how they started yeah. off with their credit cards. Mm -hmm. Because if you start now, everybody in Ghana like, oh, I'm trying to raise money, blah, 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 blah. I'm trying to get a loan from the bank. American bank, I don't know about UK, if you're going for a business idea, it's not that easy. You will get it for a house, but a business, you're not going to get it. No. So it's the same. Yeah. You're not going to get it until you have done something that you can physically show, mm. then you can get a loan for it. So most people use a credit card. Ghana, you don't have it. So cash is king in Ghana because people don't have access to credit card. There are a lot of opportunities, but people don't have the money. It's a small percentage that have the money. So if you have cash, you will always find somebody who is struggling. To I just saw this line, four plus, on my channel. I took it down because people were fighting me. The line went back like that within five minutes. The person was strapped for cash. And he was selling this line. Right next to we selling one plus for 58,000 Ghana cities. He was selling four plus world. Yeah. In UK, he could have maybe go for a loan to do whatever. Exactly. World. Mm -hmm. And he was selling it for 230,000 Ghana cities. If you do the math, he was selling it for exactly how much I was selling the next one to. And the world alone is at least 100,000 Ghana cities. Yes. So he's taking a loss. So mm -hmm. if you have cash in Ghana, yeah. this is what you do. If you yes. was in UK, like you say, you use the credit card. Credit so cash card. is king. Yeah. You need cash for your car. Mm -hmm. You cannot go and lease the car. I mean, you cannot go and finance the car yeah. here. So cash is king. Yes. If you don't have cash in Ghana, your life is going to be miserable. Yeah. Um, absolutely miserable. Yeah. Uh, if you wrote a book yeah. about you moving to Ghana, and I bought it as a rookie, someone coming to Ghana, what are three rude awakening? that I will take from that book? Set yourself uh, residual income, man. Uh, that's what I would say to, for your, if you, want to, if you want to stand a test of time in Ghana and don't run back like people do all the time, and I understand that. It could be tough out here, and I don't expect you to struggle if you have the option to go back to a comfortable life. It's comfortable. And a lot of people talk bad about the West, being blah, blah, hard. For me, it was easy. Ghana could be really hard. Mm. But if you figure it out, it could be the best thing that could ever happen to you. Yeah. So set yourself up right. I mean, have some residual income coming in. Be modest. If you don't have the money, be modest. And I think I could also take a lesson from this, right? I went for this big house, and thanks to the stock market, it was not easy. I could have easily put on something that's gonna cost me seventy, sixty thousand dollars. I don't have kids here. I could have put on like four bedrooms on you know, I don't go up. You know, you don't don't care about society, do what's going to benefit you, right? Mm -hmm. So build something that you can afford to do. Plan well. So give yourself seven years, plan well. You know, put some money into stuff that will bring you money. Mm -hmm. You know, know like, bear me, I know how, how much I can survive on. Worst case scenario, mm -hmm. about a thousand bucks, I'm okay. thousand mm dollars -hmm. a month if my house is paid off. You could up. do this, not, plan, plan like that, sit down, plan it out, and then see how you can achieve that, right? Mm -hmm. See how you can achieve that. So again, $10,000, $12,000 a year to live in Ghana, right? So how can I achieve $12,000 a year automatically? Or I could set up an like online business that will, that will bring me this amount. And once you achieve that, you have your house. You have essentially achieved your financial independence. Because okay. that's, financial independence is subjective. Mm. It's up to what you think is gonna make you feel comfortable. It, yeah. So I think that's absolutely paramount yeah. on Ghana, the money, and that's number one. Yeah. Number two, when you come here, don't think your way is the way to do things and you're arrogant and you want to come here and show people how to do things right. You're going to learn real quick. You're going to learn real quick in Ghana. Know that where you're coming from, that's not how things are in Ghana. When I came here, I was a bit hard-headed, black and white, you know. And I see that sometimes I let I overlook stuff. Recently, I just did a war for somebody. And my foreman was telling me that the guy kept $20, 20 CDs. And I think, what else? He, the guy showed up at 10. But I liked, I, I, previously I would be mad and kind of scolding the guy. Now I'm like, I talk to him in a, a different way. Like, you told me you're gonna finish today, you came in late. Mm. You finish today, we have no problem. Yeah. Right, so if you don't finish today, then I'll talk. And he finished today. Yeah. Cause I mean, I'm like, I have other jobs for you. Mm -hmm. His pricing was, was good. If you don't do this well, you're fired. I don't get it, I don't get emotional with it. I know how to work with them. 
he got a job done. We tend to want to micromanage mm. if you're coming from the West. You want a war done today. Mm -hmm. That's what we're all striving for. That's why you want him to come early. He's late. Can he get it done today? You achieve the same goal. Yeah. So I, I tend to look at things in this way, and it's, it's been beneficial. The 20 cities, I'm like, man, this guy's price was good. It's yeah. okay. I never asked him for it. I like to let things go now. Before, I'll be like, ah, this guy, he's trying to steal from me, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But that will, that, that will keep your heart rate yeah, down yeah, yeah. here. <laughs> so <laughs> that's number two. Yeah, the third number, one. Number three, I mean, just know how to take risks. I see mm. people are scared of land. I mean, I'm not on YouTube telling people the amount of land I have. I have, I have two issues on land, but I have plenty of lands, mm -hmm. right? You got to keep going. I keep going. And the core system works. Mm -hmm. This guy is delaying me and all that, but we will come to an end. Uh, we are almost close to an end. Uh, it will come to an end. It's black and white. I uh, will win the case, and you guys just wait for it. In America, there are cases. There are issues. If you invest in the stock market, there are risks associated with it, right? If you go and give 10 years to your boss at your corporate job, there is risk to it. One day, a new boss come in and you black, they don't like you, or you white, they don't like you, whatever it, it is, or COVID happens, they lay you off. You just wasted 10 years of your life in this corporate environment because you think you're going to be there till you retire and it's safe. It's not. Nothing is really safe. You're not going to walk out of here alive, right? We're all going to die at one point. The moment you came to this earth and you took your first breath, you took on the risk. You were planning to build a mini mall and land, like, land issues. You've, you've seen few you know, going to customs and people trying to string you for your money. Right. You've seen a lot of stuff and you are sticking at it. What is the pull for you? What I mean is, why Ghana? After all this, why Ghana? For me, it is, I feel like I, I can build something. Um, if I'm on my deathbed right now, my only regret will be not venturing away from being an employee and not using my creativity. I feel I have got a creative mentality. I want to use it. Even if I fail, I'll die a happy man. And I, I feel it. that I can do that in Ghana. That's why I, I want it. to do that. I love it. What is the pool for you? I think it's similar. It's similar. I realized upon talking to my friend, I went back to my younger self. I was an employee. I mean, I was an entrepreneur since I was like maybe eight. I've been doing a lot of stuff. My father is an entrepreneur. Um, that is, is, is embedded in me and I will never be happy as an employee. Having a house here, and like I said, my, my income coming in, I absolutely don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. I can't sit home and play video games all day. That's yeah. boring. So I really have nothing to lose. Like, my situation is a bit different from other people, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. If I go back, it's because I care so much about employing people and making people's lives better, which I'm already doing. So I will sacrifice going back to work or try to get a deal or something to come and invest here. That's the only way. I won't move back or something got hard because the house is built. I got the money coming mm -hmm. in. As far as survival mode, I'm fine. So I'm here because I want to build the same as you. I see that I could build something massive mm -hmm. here. Um, I'm not going to get into the numbers, but yesterday, you know, I mean, last year alone, the amount of money we had in the bank by just doing something that I didn't really exude a lot of energy in. Mm -hmm. Most people have not saved that being 10 years, being in America for 10 years okay. and liquid cash. You can make money here. You just got to, you got to be patient and find a way to go about mm -hmm. it. I mean, um, so I do see, I see, and like I said, I believe in the power of compounding. I keep buying land. Now that they will land, uh, you know, the families, I always go in a deal. I get something for cheap, have the price because mm -hmm. I'm helping them sell land, yeah. you know, and it's, if it's bigger, I even get free land and it adds up and I keep mm -hmm. accumulating this. Every year I'm buying like maybe four or five different locations here. I mean, imagine, I'm, I'm 30 now, so imagine when I'm 40, how many plots I'm gonna have and how much it's gonna be worth, right? Mm -hmm. So I look at this and I'm playing a 10 years game. I play, I've always played the long game and that makes me happy. Mm -hmm. I find joy in the pain, the painful process. I, what people are running from it, I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I enjoy thinking about the future. I enjoy thinking about, you know, the, 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 I was the most happiest when I was struggling to build a house, when I was putting that crazy hours, when, when I was, I didn't know how it was going to be done. I was really happy. I had a lot of energy, right? And that, that's, that's, what, that's what drives me. I don't like comfort. I don't like knowing that I'm going to get paid $6,000 a month, every month, and wake up and go. I don't like that. I like not knowing and playing a bigger, like, I take risks. Like I said, how many people will guarantee a land sale in Ghana? I don't know. Any, I, I do that. I, I do that. I will pay, I will pay the money back. And luckily, we do a lot of work. I've had one experience where I had to pay the land back to somebody. Okay. And it's not even because there was an issue. 
because that person felt uncomfortable yeah. and they had their reasons. You just can't say I felt uncomfortable. No, you have to have your reasons. Yeah. It makes sense. We pay the money back and then the family, we will deal with them later on. Either we take land for now, we take the money. But we will deal with it. We're not going to go. We're not, we're not going to lose. Mm -hmm. Right? So, but we sold a lot of land. No issues. I'm guaranteeing. I'm taking, I'm taking my cut. Usually, somebody will get 9%. I can take 15% because mm -hmm. I'm taking a risk to, as an insurance company. Mm -hmm. So, I'm not going to get 10% as a, as a broker. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you are safe and I'm at risk. So, you're expecting mm -hmm. to, it's not going to happen. So, these are all opportunities down here that I see. And I want the land situation to be solved. But as of now, I'm taking advantage of the risk mm -hmm. I hand and I'm making a business out of it. Yeah. So do you think, you, you said something about um, everybody has got their own circumstances. Briefly, do you think it's in everyone's, everybody's strength to move to Ghana? If you want to, you can. Uh, if you want to, you can. But, you know, sometimes, I'm very reasonable, right? Sometimes people have kids, you know, because of their situation, they are not tough. Not everybody's everybody's cut out to you know save money and go hardcore and all that stuff people are not built like us man you in the military and all that stuff people are not not everybody's built like us so it's not for everybody yeah ghana's not for everybody and it's fine and it's that's fine you know uh just try to do something small back home and you don't have to move here you don't have to feel bad about it it's going to take warriors to build this country you know america was built with warriors right every country is built with warriors not built with you know, faint-hearted people and people are weak. Mm. You have to be strong to be down here. And if you're not strong and you cry easily and you're weak, Ghana is not for you. And it's as simple as that. It might sound harsh, but you have to be strong. You have to be built differently to survive down here. You said something that resonated with me, but you do say a lot of things that resonated with me. I'll talk more mm -hmm. behind the scene. But you said something about finding a woman whose goals align to your goal and settling down early? Absolutely. How has that helped you? Oh, tremendously. Because I, I was having fun. You know, when I was in the Navy, I was, you know, having fun. As a young guy, you know, you want to go out, you know, it's, you know, a few girls here and there. Spend a lot of money. I'm a nice guy. I want to go out, pay for the, the food and all that. Just all scattered. Your energy is scattered. Um, the amount of people you're hanging out with, bad energy. You know, I believe in those. So like it rubs off on you. And I wasn't really going anywhere. I was not poor by any means when I was about... 2021, I've always had like $30,000 in my savings uh, because of I went on this diploma, I got the money, I've always, ref, you know, fill it back on. Never really had any financial issues, but it was mediocrity. I wasn't moving to the next level until I got with my wife. And now thinking about what girl I'm trying to get this week and all that, that thinking was taking a lot of my time. It was gone. Yeah. Now I had, I, had, I had the free space to think about the future and what I want to do. Yeah. And one thing I love too is, you know, some people, you know, you have the, you have the woman, you set it down low, you set it, you set it down early but the woman is like doubtful or like when you want to do something, it's all negative and always, you know, I don't have that luckily. And uh, if I had that, absolutely, it wasn't going to work because I'm, I'm, I'm a different breed. I'm not, I don't like the predictability. So if you can, if you can go on the ride, you know, and my wife is a rider. She's a, she actually quit her job as well, a great job. And uh, she was braiding, making way more money, if you could believe that. Making way more money, like twice the amount that she was making work, working. Uh, as a teacher mm -hmm. so she's an entrepreneur and um you've seen the work ethic she just started yeah. a youtube channel so I, i'm blessed in that regard right and i think you too you say your wife yeah. is down here managing yeah. things and every man needs that and some of us we just go for the looks luckily i got both of both for her. i yeah. got the best of both of her. she That's got the it. looks That's and you know it. she's yeah. backing me up so um, yeah it's true it's so i put i put that in because i believe that and i always say in in our language that it's actually a secret rule that's why i believe that there's something there's a spiritual thing in this thing where when you align with your wife and you all work as a team it just moves mountains the woman's spirit man the woman's spirit back in the, the love the love behind it it helps because i mean since she came in my life, I mean, a lot has changed, bro. Uh, she was with me. We were just boyfriend and girlfriend. I bought my first land. I bought my first car when we were together. You know, everything. Everything is there. And people, some people talk about divorce and all that stuff. As a matter of fact, if that happens, I'm more than happy to give her half of it. Because yeah. she deserves it. Me, me and you think so So, much. So people are just scared of, I mean, she yeah. deserves it. She's been on the ride. She's done her bit. She, yeah, she, she's done her fair share. She was making money. She, quit her, she stopped that. Because she believed in my dream and she's here now. So if, if she wants half of it, and usually that's not even the case, they get like 30% or 35%. I don't, I, don't, I don't wish this on myself, but I'm happy with that. I analyze that's risk, it. as uncomfortable yeah. as it is, I look at it and I'm aware of what I mean. Some people are scared it's okay. Yeah. Uh, I'd rather I had a person before I made it. Because yeah. right now, if I didn't have my wife, 
I don't know who I was going to trust. As a matter of fact, that's, that's one thing that I know for a fact, that if I didn't have my wife now, it would mm -hmm. be really hard for me to yeah. set it down. Yeah. Um, so, do you have plans for the kids? Are you going to raise them in Ghana? Or oh yeah, my kids are going to grow up in Ghana, but maybe college in the States. Yeah. But definitely growing up here, because um, I want to, you grow up different, man. When you grow up, you grow up different. Yeah, yeah you grow up different, and uh, I kind of, I want that for them. Resilience. Resilience, yeah, yeah. And appreciating the world, because you see how life could be. That's it. Um, give, just advertise whatever you're doing. Any, any of the moves, Acadian, the land. Oh, Acadian, it's all through yeah. Acadian, right? So Acadian Limited, we, uh, we sell land. And the land that we sell, we've done a lot of due diligence. And we are basically guaranteeing your money that nothing is going to go wrong before you even pay a dime. There's a contract in place. Mm -hmm. We handle everything. We are basically like the insurance company. You pay the money to us, we pay the family, we ensure everything goes right. If something goes wrong, let's say you're touching the line and something goes wrong, you come to us, we pay you and then we take the family on. So you as a buyer, you have nothing to worry about. Yeah, there's a markup out there, we are very transparent with it. You know the actual price of the, of the land, and then there's a little markup of like 12%. When money comes to Ghana, what people don't know is, when money comes to Ghana in our account, the bank takes 3%. Mm. A dollar account, they take 3%. So the money that you think we are getting, 3% of that is going to, 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 to Bank of Ghana and the bank, mm. right? So it all makes sense, we make things easier. Most of this family don't even know how to receive money internationally. And we handle all of that on your behalf. And the contract stipulates everything that's in there. Mm. And uh, so that's been great, that's been great. Family are very happy, people are happy, people are building. You don't have to think about all the headache and stuff like that. We do the work with our lawyer. That's one. Two, if you have your land already, you want us to design a nice house for you or commercial, whatever it is. Uh, you guys haven't seen my uh, house and some stuff, stuff that we do. We sh I'll show some of the projects that we're working on now. Recently, we just bought a house for these African-Americans in 3.5 months, but I think it's like we have like one month delay, so 4.5 months. Uh, they bought the land from us. It always happens. <laughs> They bought the land from us. Uh, they came to Ghana for the first time within a week. They bought the land from us. They felt comfortable with the contract. Everything went right. They built it. We did with the land guys, everything. We, we, we make sure you are good. Uh, design building, solar installation, customized furniture, all in house on Acadian Limited. And um, hopefully, I win my land back mm -hmm. so that I can build this many more. And I'm I, praying I, for that. I have a YouTube channel, yeah. Rosh Asari, where I preach a lot of the stuff that we're talking yeah. about now share my journey as well and uh, encouraging my brothers and sisters who have the heart for it. It's not for everyone, but the people who have the heart for it, they should come here and help the country develop because we're going to change the narrative, we're going to change the mindset of the locals, the people I work with, I educate them, I, I let them see things differently, I see the progress in people. They just don't know any better, but you know, if you teach them, they can learn. So more and more of us are here and we are putting the work in, you know, influencing people collectively over you know, in the next 20 years, the past 20 years we have achieved a line, the next 20 years, it will be a tsunami, man. And I think more people are coming every year. And that's all I, that's all my channel is about. That's what I stand for. That's what the company is for, yeah. to help people to be able to do. Because most people bring money here and mm -hmm. then they go missing, they get discouraged. That's it, yeah. So that's why we are here to make sure that never happens. Mm -hmm. So if you want to do anything in that realm, you want a place to stay, you know, you've got a nice Airbnb at a signature, yeah. if, you, if you can afford. Two hundred dollars a night for really two good, rooms. good area. So if, if you stay for a longer period, we can work with that. But beautiful, you can, you could, you know, always reach out to me. And thank you very much for, you know, mm. meeting up with you. I mm. like how you always come and comment on my oh, channel. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're a very real guy, no, man. No, no, I appreciate no. it. And um, one thing I'll say before I end this video is, man, you are doing something good, and nothing good comes easy, including raising kids, everything. Nothing good comes easy. One thing I've realized in my journey is any time, every year, any year, that is so difficult. Like, I can feel it in my veins that, <laughs> you know, what? I've given everything. Yeah. The end of the year, I get something good. Of course. So whatever you're going through, I think something good will come amen, out amen, of it. Amen. And I see people like you, and there's a guy called Kojonov, mm -hmm. and I have other few people. Man, if we can pull resources, to, not even resources, even just yeah, the, mind the mindset together. Um, it will start with us. Yeah, I, I would love to do like, you know, personal development stuff because yeah. I have a lot of locals that reach out to me about how they see things differently. Some people are just sitting home looking for a job and they were able to take things into their own hands and they see progress. Uh, and is that something I want to get into? It's not a big thing here, the personal development side of things. Yeah. But people just don't know any better. Like I said, they just don't know. You don't yeah. know what you don't know. 
So hopefully along the line, I will, I will, I will start doing that, you know, hold a few talks here and there. Mm -hmm. and Because, I mean, there's not a lot of jobs, and everybody's sitting around looking for mm -hmm. jobs in Ghana. That's the, prob that's the major problem in Ghana. Yeah. People need to start, you know, creating jobs for themselves. The people who work with the handyman, they make money. Yeah. The handy people yeah. installing glass and ceilings, they're making money, bro. Yeah. They're making a lot of money. So we all want to sit in the office and just wait around. You know, just see where the market is going. Mm -hmm. Real estate is moving in Ghana. There are certain stuff that if you have the scale, you're going to eat in Ghana. So if the school is not paying you, we are not yeah. up there yet, my friend. No, you know, no. go find something else to do. Yeah. I'm an accountant, but I'm building houses here now. So yeah. you know what no. I mean? Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you very much for this. All right, I really thank appreciate you. it. All if right, you guys. like this video, and subscribe, please give it a subscribe to the channel. <laughs> please give it a like, subscribe to come on my journey. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. Sorry.